Hello everybody, it's Kelly from 411vapes.com doing a real quick stainless steel wick rebuild for the Kanger Pro Tank. Uh, doing this basically for a friend. Thought I'd go ahead and put it on there just in case anybody else wants to see it. So let me go ahead and adjust the camera here. Hopefully it doesn't wig out on me it was before. Uh, what we're going to need, we got the Kanger, or the Bamo. We've got a nice little, can't even pick it up here. Nice little uh, ribbon wire here for our wire. We've got a stainless steel mesh wick that's already been oxidized. We want to make sure that's oxidized properly so it doesn't conduct electricity obviously our pro tank and then we've got a nice little toenail clipper here that works great anytime you're building coils so let's go ahead and get into this first thing you want to do is unscrew the base to the Kanger pro tank and then unscrew your head now this one's already missing the coil because I did start doing this and for some reason my camera quit recording so it is missing the coil First thing you want to do is you got your little stem on the top there is just wiggle and pull that off. Now if it's hard to take off you can use a pliers to grab it just don't squeeze it hard. Here you've got your head. Now on the bottom of it you've got a metal plug and then you've got a rubber grommet. You want to go ahead and grab that metal plug and pull it straight out and then you've got your little rubber grommet again just grab it pull it out comes out pretty easily alright so now you've got a blank blank head there no coil in it we're gonna set that aside we're gonna take our stainless steel wick now what you want to do with the stainless steel wick is you want to make sure it will fit in here in your head with a little bit of tension but not too much because if you scrape the sides too much and it scrapes off the oxidization it will conduct electricity and cause a short so you want to make sure beforehand that you fit that in there and make sure it fits snug but not too snug okay now what we're going to do is go ahead and wrap our coil here now I like to use the wire mesh or the sorry about that the ribbon wire because it seems to be easier to coil just stick it between your two fingers and just start wrapping it it's easier you get more surface contact with the ribbon wire than you do with round wire just take your time with it it's not a race You want it snug, but you don't want it too tight because you want the the wire to be able to, or the mesh to be able to breathe too. If it does, if it can't breathe and it can't wick, you're really just doing yourself a, a disservice. Not perfect there, no, is it? Here I just said slow down. It's not a race, and I guess I don't take my own advice. Let me go ahead and spread those out a little bit. All right. A little sloppy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim some of that excess wire off. This is where your clippers come in handy. These actually cut that wire pretty easy. I mean that was all there is to it. Now you want to hold your two tails here two wires when you feed them. Feed them through the top of the head and then slide your your wick in there. Just like so. Now some people to make this easier will put this on top and plug it in there 
Um, it does help keep your wick down because you want to keep your wick down. If your wick doesn't stay down, then you have flooding problems because it leaves a gap. So let me go ahead and do that just to just to show you and to make things a little easier on myself. That helps hold it down with that uh, rubber washer there. So then what we'll do is we'll take our little rubber grommet here and thread one of the wires through it and then we're going to stick that in the in the bottom okay now what you want to do is make sure that your wire is tight when you just give it a little tug you don't want to pull it too tight because then that will bend your bend your wick and then just take the other one the metal plug here and go ahead and stick that in the rubber grommet again you want to make sure that that wire is tight so what it should look like is you got your wire sticking out now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim those extra wires off again this is where it comes in handy because you can get right up to the side so you got no wire sticking out which could possibly cause a short You got no wire sticking out there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clippers here and trim down the stainless steel mesh or wick. And then I'll do it again on the other side. And that there is where that comes in handy. And then I like to squeeze them back because when you do that with your your plier or your fingernail clippers, it kind of squishes them. So I just like to squeeze it back. You can take the take the head off of it or the stem off of it. And just kind of squeeze it back into shape. So then what we'll do is we'll put that head back on once you got it squeezed into shape. And we'll put that back on. And screw it back on to your base. Oh, let's see I've got mine just a little too long here. So when that happens just go ahead and trim it up again. Just like so. I thought that was going to be a problem. And then just screw it down just like that. Now you can check before you even put it back on your tank so you don't waste juice. Let's see if I can get that in there. 1.5 ohms. Go ahead and fill up the old pro tank here with well, what little bit of fluid I've got in here, I guess. Plan that out well. Since I left the rest in the other room, I was thinking ahead today. Uh, this is going to be a real quick one. See what we can get out of this here. There you have it, a stainless steel wick, stainless steel mesh wick rebuild for the Pro Tank. I 
hope this has helped somebody out there uh, thank you for watching this review or this uh, rebuild whatever you want to call it tutorial uh, this is Kelly 411 vapes if you'd like to check out the rest of our reviews go ahead and head on over to 411vapes.com until the next one vape safe